Well, welcome to Beyond Belief, and I hope you're planted in your couch or wherever you may be at home watching this incredible program of Beyond Belief. Debbie Solaris is an ET contactee, interdimensional traveler, galactic historian, and after a very faithful extraterrestrial contact experience just a few years ago, Debbie awakened to her true star lineage and higher calling. Now, through her ancestral connection with the Akashic Records, she's been receiving downloads of galactic historical information and universal spiritual knowledge ever since. Debbie, welcome to the program. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. This is fascinating. Tell me about a galactic historian. What is that, first of all? Actually, that wasn't even a term I coined for myself. It was just what people started calling me uh -huh. after. They coined the phrase. Yeah, they coined the phrase um, because of the type of information that I was downloading from the Akashic Records. Um, after I had my ET contact experience in 2012, um, I found that um, just kind of randomly, I was my, well, my extra uh, sensory perception had increased quite a bit. I would say probably by a hundred percent. Wow. Um, because before I was just like a regular, ordinary human. I didn't have any ability. <laughs> What's a regular human? <laughs> I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just kind of weird. But um, I, I found that I was um, starting to download information about galactic wars and um, different star systems. Um, I'm, I'm not an astronomy person. I've never studied astronomy, okay. but all of a sudden I knew all the star systems. I knew where they were located, um, the details of these star systems. I knew the history of these star systems. Just overnight, right? Overnight, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was really strange. Tell us about this contactee experience. What happened to you? Well, in 2012, this was probably around, um, probably May, June time period, I was very concerned about you know things that were going on in the world. And so one night I sent out a prayer to the entire universe that um, we here on earth needed assistance. We needed um, divine uh, protection. Divine in a big help, way. In a very big way. And so I, um, I said to send this prayer out. Um, I sent it out to um, the angelic realm, the Jesus, I mean, anybody I can think of. And I was a non-believer at the time. I was not somebody that believed in extraterrestrials. My husband was more the person that was into right. the paranormal. Um, I, I wasn't so much, but I just sent this prayer out and I didn't, nothing happened for two weeks. I was just kind of like, oh, well, you know, I prayed, nothing happened. Did you expect anything to happen? Not really. Just I was just put sent, it out there. I just put it out there. Yeah. I wasn't really expecting any kind of response, but um, in June, I mean, the first week of June 2012, um, I had just had minor back surgery. Um, I went to sleep as normal. And when I came to consciousness, I found that I was in a different reality. And it was not a dream. It was actually much more, uh, I would say, uh, intense, more, more intense than, a, than a, even a lucid dream. Would you say you were physically somewhere else? Absolutely, yeah. Aboard a craft, perhaps? Uh, uh, yes, I, w I found myself on a extraterrestrial starship. Uh, it was... Was it ho hovering above the planet? Uh, my understanding from what the extraterrestrials on board that ship told me is that they were in the solar system. Um, in an area between uh, the asteroid belt and Jupiter. And this contactee experience that occurred, I want to get into what the ship looked like and what the oh, ETs look like. Yeah, absolutely. But why you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I, Were there I other my, humans aboard the ship? Not, not any Earth humans, no, not that I saw. All right, so you're aboard this craft. Kind of describe, first of all, the ETs, Deb. Uh, I got led by the ship. The ship was kind of like a living entity. It was not like a metallic ship. It was made of light and some sort of weird um, materials that I'd never seen before. But um, physical. But physical, yeah. Um, I was led to a room and I encountered about four or five extraterrestrial beings. And um, they looked like the standard grays or humans? What did they look like? Um, they didn't look like gray aliens, but they didn't look human either. Okay. Uh, they had larger heads, um, large eyes. I could see that much about Clearly, them. Clearly, if they walked down our streets, people would say, uh, 
that's not a human. Yeah, right? yeah, they were definitely not human. They had more refined features than a gray alien. I mean, if you were to first glance at them, you would think, oh yeah, they're possibly grays, but they weren't. Um, they had very colorful auras. Um, they emanated all this love and acceptance. How did they communicate with you? Telepathy? Telepathy, yes. Did you feel at all threatened or scared? Not at all, not at all. And that was kind of surprising to me because, I mean, obviously I'd never encountered anything like this. Absolutely, so, so you're there on this craft. Describe what the craft looked like inside. It looked very organic, actually. Uh, it kind of shifted and moved. I mean, were the ETs sitting at control panels and like you would, you know, expect a pilot to sit at a plane in no, the cockpit? No, it was, they had me inside what they call the orientation room, which looked like kind of a futuristic room um, with some chairs and uh, there was a big hologram in the room. And they had me in the middle of this hologram and uh, they were communicating with me via telepathy. And I remember asking them, why am I here? You know, what is this? Where am I at? Who are you? And did why you, am I did here? Did you get answers? Absolutely, yes. You did. Why yeah. were you there? They said they heard my prayer. Number one, they heard my prayer and they were moved by the prayer. Uh, number two is um, I was part of their family. So I was a, um, a human incarnation of a soul that originated from their star system. Were you there to learn something from them or were you there for them to learn something about you and us? I think it was probably both, but I would say it, I was there for, to remember why I came to Earth. Richard Dolan appeared on one of our programs called Phenomena that we have with Gaia. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about the late Dr. John Mack, psychiatrist, mm -hmm. about these encounters similar to what happened to you. Mm -hmm. There is little that can be more terrifying for a human being than to be overtaken by another species. This is what occurs during what is called the phenomena of alien abduction. Though a highly controversial subject, it's been studied in depth, including by a leading psychologist at Harvard University, Dr. John Mack. His findings? Something real is happening. I spoke with Richard Dolan about Dr. Mack's conclusions. They'll say, oh, John Mack thought that the ETs were good, whereas people like Bud Hopkins and David Jacobs think the ETs are bad. And it's really not that simplistic. What John Mack said is, look, a lot of people had very, very frightening experiences here. But what he pointed out is, if you are going to go through any kind of true growth in your life, it's going to involve stripping away closely held illusions. We all grow up with illusions. You, do, you have, I have, everyone listening has grown up with false beliefs. And if you are going to go beyond that and, and truly develop into something beyond what, you know, this little box of reality that you're placed in, right? Then you have to go through a painful process of facing down lies and illusions, and it's not fun. No one ever wants to do that. And I think what John Mack was saying is that this was a component of what we call the alien abduction experience. Um, he didn't really like to use the phrase abduction, but essentially that's an important component of it. Now, does that mean that, that their intentions were all good? I don't know if he would even go so far as to say that, but that the repercussions of the contact that we have with them could result in true human growth. And, and you know, when you look at people who've had these experiences, many of them have developed uh, psychic abilities, psychic abilities and, also and also interests that have to do with a kind of a global consciousness. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is very typical. So there's something going on there that is not, you know, it, you can use a traumatic experience to get personal growth out of it. And I think that was his point. Sounds like some of the things that happened to you. Absolutely, it's uh, dead on what happened to me. Um, it's fun funny that he used the word illusion because mm -hmm. that's what the Arcturians, they, that they, that's what they told me they were, um, the, the extraterrestrials I had encounters with. They said that a lot of the things, because I had a lot of questions about what was happening on Earth, and a lot of the things that they told me um, they mentioned the word illusion. Um, they mentioned it like five times. Um, uh, that the third dimensional reality that we're in currently is an illusion. When I was on board the ship, um, the ship, 
it struck me, um, just the environment there, the colors were more brilliant. Uh, right. The details were more um, very sharp. Uh, it seemed more like a hyper reality. I had never seen that before. Um, it felt more real than you and me sitting here right now. Really? Uh, yeah, absolutely. When you were brought back, mm -hmm. were you put back in your bedroom? Where, where were you brought yeah, back? Yeah, I woke up um, in my bed. It was morning. Thinking you had a dream? Yeah, yeah. well, initially, no, I knew it wasn't a dream because it just seemed so strange. Um, yeah. But I was definitely, I guess, um, perplexed about what happened. I remember calling my husband, he was away at the time, and I told him Were what you happened. emotional? No, not at all. Okay. I was just kind of like, I, I said, I had, I had a, 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 a strange experience, and he didn't believe me. He thought it was just a dream. And I said, no, this wasn't a dream. This was a, a real, very real experience. Yeah. And Does he believe you now? He does, yes. Yeah. What convinced him finally? Um, I think the fact that um, there was so much detail to my story. Yeah. And because uh, I remember details, I, I remember details even today, like it happened yesterday. I mean, it. Uh, I still remember the rooms, the the atrium, the, uh, being led uh, through the ship. You know, seeing different spaces in the ship. I still remember encountering other extraterrestrial beings, not Arcturians, but other other species of beings. Um, I remember it all like yesterday. Did they ever tell you what star cluster they were from? Uh, the, uh, yes, they said they were from the Bodhis constellation. Okay, interesting. Many light years away. Yeah, about 37 light years away. The Akashic Records, tell me a little bit about what they are and what your involvement was with that. Actually, I, I didn't intend to become an Akashic Records uh, guide or person. Um, just happened. It just happened. I just noticed that I was just, um, when they were saying on the clip, video clip that people have psychic, you know, they gain psychic experiences, um, that's definitely what happened to me. Um, I found that my extrasensory perception increased um, a, a hundredfold after I had this experience. I was um, seeing auras, I was seeing energy, I was uh, having interdimensional experiences. Uh, I was getting downloads. Um, I, would, I would meet a person and know immediately, oh yeah, they're from the Pleiades originally. I mean, it was just kind of crazy. Uh, and I didn't know where this information was coming from. Uh, I spent several years, I think after 2012, just trying to figure out what was happening to me. Sure. You know? Oh yeah, who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah. On Gaia's program initiation, Matias De Stefano talked about the Akashic Records. My name is Matias Stefano, and my purpose is to remember. Since I was three, I began to remember past life before I was born. I thought this was normal until many years later, I realized people could not see what I could see. Usually at this age, the brain begins to disengage with other dimensions, but mine stay active and still is today. This part of my brain that is still active allows me to remember in full detail the past and connects me with the cosmic memory that unites us all. Through these visions, I see people and places and important things. These visions help me piece together the existence of not only humans, but the universe itself. Similar to what happened to you, Debbie? I would say it's uh, exactly what happened to me. All right. What are the Akashic Records? The Akashic Records um, is a, a higher dimensional storehouse of um, cosmic information. About us? About us, about everything that happens in the universe. And uh, I always say this, and uh, I, I stand by it, all of us have access to the Akashic Records. Um, I don't know why it's so easy for me to access them, uh, maybe because of what happened uh, similar to Mateus, but okay. um, I, I'm just able to download the information much easier. Um, and like, like he mentioned, it's kind of like I see a movie. Mm -hmm. I see a movie in my head. You know? So if I'm doing a reading for a client, I'm, I'm accessing their particular records. I use their full name and birth date. That's all I need. And, I, I'll and be off able to, you go. And off I go, yeah. Okay. 
Um, they call it the Book of Life. That's what the Bible used to call it. I think that's what they were referring to was the Akashic Records. Um, but it's kind of like a, um, an intergalactic uh, co cosmic uh, computer system, you know, that contains every single information that's ever happened in the past, future, present, um, alternate dimensions, alternate parallel um, lives, uh, different star systems, um, everything. Can, and, can you erase the Akashic Records and rewrite it, or is it what it is? I think it's mostly what it is. Um, you can certainly set new intentions. I do that a lot for clients. You can set new intentions for, for clients in their records. Um, so I don't know if there's anything that actually can be erased, but I do think that um, we can certainly set new intentions for clients to have a much more productive and, um, and fulfilling life. Since we're born, from the moment we're born, Debbie, does this, our life go into this Akashic record? Absolutely, even before we're born. Who's recording it, or does just life do it? My understanding, there's Akashic guides. Um, the extraterrestrials that I met on board the ship um, told me that I have an ancestral connection to the Akashic records, which is why I'm able to access them. But um, I do think there are higher dimensional um, etheric beings that maybe tend to the records. Um, but it's basically, I think, a part of source. You know? Is there a difference between galactic Akashic records and other Akashic records? Or is it all one and the same? Um, I would say they're one and the same. I think it depends on uh, your ability to access. Um, it's like at various levels. Okay. Uh, so you have, you know, kind of the earth level uh, Akashic records, which um, I think uh, most Akashic readers operate from the, the earth level, um, which is fine. You know, that's where they're at. Um, I tend to operate in the higher levels, you know, so I go, sure. in, you know, way deeper into the records. Are you glad this experience happened to you, Deb? Um, yes, I am. No, uh, no downsides at all here? Um, there's been some downsides. Um, I can't say my life was perfect after I after? had this experience. Um, it went through a lot of ups and downs. Uh, because of the experience? Um, no, not because of the experience itself, but maybe because of my reaction to the experience. Uh, I felt a lot of depression after I had my ET contact experience because I was now, I went from being in the higher dimensions back to third dimension and I didn't understand why I was back in the third dimension. So it's right. very similar to an NDE um, type, where, you know, somebody that has an NDE go through. Um, it made my, I guess, my 3D life um, a little more difficult because uh, I was having these experiences and I couldn't explain it. Now, you do readings for people. Right, Explain yes. what they are and what do you call them, starseed readings? Um, I do galactic Akashic readings and uh, I have a, a, quite, a, quite a few clients um, across the world that contact me for readings. A lot of these clients are people that, um, like Matthias was mentioning, mm -hmm. uh, that they were, uh, they're starting to get memories. You know, they're starting to have- Similar experiences, experiences. to you, right? Yeah, some, somewhat, yeah. Um, and, or they're just starting to have random visions and, you know, they're starting to see um, extraterrestrials and they're wondering why. And so they'll contact me for a reading and I'll help them guide through why they're having these experiences, you know, what's happening with them. Now, you're going to do a reading on me. I am, And yes. you need what kind of information? I actually have it already. You do? I do. Who gave it to you? I looked it up. Oh, all right. <laughs> you use Google Foo. So. Okay, so how do we begin? <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to do a little bit of a space clearing uh, before we get started. Okay just to make sure that we have only the highest vibrations around us. Um, usually when I start off, I do a divine heart triangle. So I'm gonna be connecting my heart chakra to yours just to connect with your energy. We do the space clearing, I'll do the pathway prayer, and I have your name and birth date. Okay. So you wanna go ahead and get started? Sure, let's okay. do it. Okay. Only the highest vibrations of love and light can be in the space and all objects in the space for the highest good of George Ralph Norrie. For this reading today, 
All other energies must leave now. I call in the highest level of the divine that knows that love is the power and the truth from which we read the highest level guides and angels of George Ralph Nury and myself to help us with this reading. Archangel Michael, hold this space for us, and so it is. And so we do acknowledge the forces of light, asking for guidance, direction, and courage to know the truth, as it is revealed for our highest good and the highest good of everyone connected to us, O Holy Spirit of God. Help me to know George Ralph Nori in the light of the Akashic Records, to see George Ralph Nori in the eyes of the Lords of the Records, and enable me to share the wisdom and compassion that the Master's teachers and loved ones have for George Ralph Nori. Okay, the records are now open. Okay, uh, George, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this, but you're not originally from Earth. Uh, there's a reason why I think you're very interested in the paranormal mm -hmm. and the things beyond, because you didn't originate from this star system. Part of what Dolores Cannon, who wrote The Three Waves of Volunteers in the New Earth, she talks about three generations of volunteers that came here to Earth to help right. with the Earth Ascension. And I knew Dolores. Yeah. Yeah, she was a wonderful lady um, from the same star system as me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, there you go. Uh, but um, she, she talks about the first waivers, okay? So since you were born in 1950, you're a very early first waiver, okay? You came in kind of more the beginning of these this waves of volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, so what this tells me about you is you ha you are a soul that has had probably a few incarnations here on earth. Um, you've, you're very experienced. Um, you came from uh, different star systems originally. You've had experiences in those star systems. Um, but the George that's here now is, you know, here on uh, a bigger mission, okay? Um, what I picked up as far as your origins is you came from a star system called Lyra. Lyra. Okay. Lyra, originally, okay. Um, you've been to several star systems, okay. So Lyra is very important because it is where everything began in this galaxy. So when we started this deep experimentation into physicality, so we went from the higher dimensional etheric realms, we were all part of source, so we separated from source. You were part of a soul group that was assigned to the galactic center, which is located between um, Scorpio and Sagittarius. Okay. Okay. So there was um, a group of beings um, known as the co-creators who created the Lyra system. Uh, they created planets and uh, and locations for for physical life to begin. When this occurred, um, you, as part of this Oversoul group you incarnated into the Lyra system, okay? I do see, um, trying to see which planet you were on. I think it was Avion. That's the name of the planet that you originated. The planet Avion. Avion, Interesting. Yeah. Uh, you, I think, um, you didn't have the typical Lyran uh, experience, okay? And the reason why I say that is because most Lyran people that when they were first created, these were higher dimensional humans, by the way, they weren't um, third dimensional humans. Uh, they were very, a very simple race of people that most of them were agricultural. Okay. You did not not have that agricultural experience. All right. Uh, on that planet. On saying. that planet. Um, the planet evolved, I think, and they started having uh, technology. And I'm seeing that you were connected to the technology of that planet. Uh, that uh, because you had certain skill sets, uh, maybe in communication or in uh, you know, certain technological uh, propensities, um, you were pulled away from your family to work in, uh, in the new uh, Laren Starfleet, okay? Um, they did have enough technology where they had starships. 
Um, I'm seeing you on board a starship. So I was a spacefaring individual. Huh? Yeah, you were. Yeah, you 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 traveled. Um, you traveled a bit. Um, Maybe my interest in UFOs got started that way. As, absolutely, you know? I would think so. Um, um, a lot, I talk about this a lot in my readings, but Lyra was this beautiful paradise planet, a, a paradise star system that um, got brutally attacked by a neighboring star system called Draco. Okay, this is where we get our, our concept of draconians and, and reptilians. Jeez. Were, were uh, they obliterated? They obliterated the, the system. My people, basically. Yeah. They say 50 million uh, Lyrans lost their lives during the war. 50 million? 50 million. They completely annihilated, I think, at least three planets. Um, you, I think, survived the wars, but somehow your ship got circumvented. You were headed to Sirius. Um, that was where I think you, your ship evacuated some people. Um, you were being chased by a draconian fleet, and I'm seeing that you, you were supposed to go to Sirius, but you got circumvented, and you ended up in the Orion Belt Stars. Uh, in Orion, I'm seeing that um, you were in the middle belt star, which I think is Anna Lamb. Um, I'm seeing that you got involved with um, the Orion liberation process. Um, Orion uh, was a very large star system. Mm -hmm. It's still a very large star system. It has um, a, a lot of stars, um, and it's kind of like the melting pot of the galaxy because there's many different races of beings that live there, some of them benevolent and some of them not. And so there was a definitely a, more of a duality consciousness in Orion. Um, uh, and there was a lot of conflicts, a lot of wars for millions of years. And I'm right in the middle of all of that, right? You are, yeah. You, huh. That's me. Yeah, you you have, and I think even your zodiac sign, you're, you're a Gemini, right? Yes, so, I am. Um, so you, you have the duality within yourself that you're, try, you're constantly trying to resolve. Mm -hmm. um, but what, what's really great about being a Gemini is that you're a well-integrated soul. You understand, you know, uh, your feminine side, your masculine side, you understand the light aspects of yourself, the dark aspects of yourself. You are a great communicator. Uh, I'm seeing that you worked in intelligence with the Black, Res Black League resistance fighters in the Orion system. I always call the belt stars the good zone because these were people that wanted to achieve their freedom and they wanted to achieve unity consciousness within the Orion system. But they were constantly um, fighting against the outlier stars in the Orion system, Rigel, Bellatrix, uh, Betelgeuse, that, um, that, all, that wanted to control, control the entire system, okay? uh, including the belt stars. Can you tell how my life came to an end during that period? They're saying that you went on a reconnaissance mission and your ship got shot down. Oh boy, that's how I went, huh? Yeah. Well, at least I went out as a hero. You did. Did I have family? Uh, yes, you did. Now, where may they be? They were in the uh, an an Analam, which what, is that. And story. according, to, uh, Debbie, to our time, Mm -hmm. When might this have occurred? This was likely um, at least a million years ago when this happened. Really? Uh, you, Interesting. You've been here on Earth for a while. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to get into like yeah. a, a full Akashic reading, but um, you've been here for a while. Um, you've been here on Earth for a long time. Um, what I'm seeing is eventually in consequent reincarnations in Orion, Orion did manage to achieve unity consciousness. So you as this, I guess, compassionate soul, um, you know, wanting to be of service, um, you wanted to do the same thing for planet Earth. And that was your that's, mission that's, here. And it's still my mission, I think. It, it is, really yeah. Is. I want to look at a clip from Raymond Tarpey, who talked with Regina Meredith on Open Minds about the universe and how it's inhabited. Absolutely. It is endless. It is a universe of worlds. It is. What Casey talks about is a habitation of all the realms now invisible to us. We think they are uninhabited. He talked about the solar system specifically, and he comes through with a new version of astrology where 
Mars is inhabited right now by billions of souls. So are Venus, all the planets, all of them are inhabited, but they are in the realm of dark matter and dark energy, which our quantum physicists are finally learning about and realizing that they're starting to sound like a bunch of spiritual philosophers now talking, trying to explain the standard model. Their standard model, which grew from their attempt to understand everything that's going on here, and now it's going into realms that they never predicted would happen. Let me ask you a question at that point then. If these beings, these, these thousands and thousands of souls are living on Mars and Venus, is there a migration back and forth between Earth for them? And lifetimes. Take, lifetimes. Lifetimes of inhabiting so Earth. So he said your astrology is from a recent sojourn in Mars oh. or a recent sojourn in Venus. I don't know what the nature of that life is, but it seems to be a vibration and a whole other realm of being that we don't know about because as the quantum physicists now say uh, most of the matter and the uh, energy of the universe is unseen by us our senses or the instruments that we've created right. to sense. So that means they have to be existing within for lack of a better term other dimensional fields. Correct. What do you think of that? Um, I, is he spot on or not? I think he's pretty, pretty close to the truth, yes. Um, that could, because when I look in the records, I see multitudes of star people that live in alternate dimensions. The reason why I think our scientists, they look out in the, in the, in the space and they can't find anything mm -hmm. is because they're looking in the third dimension. Most of these beings live in higher dimensions. Other dimensions that we can't tell. Yeah. What's, uh, what happened to you, your experience? How would you tell a human, how they can live their life without that kind of experience you went through? Um, I think my story is every person's story. I, th I think maybe I'm a prototype for what humanity is going towards. Um, we're, we all have these abilities. Um, I'm not unique, you know, I, I'm, I, I struggle with same human issues everybody oh, else does. And, um, but, I think I just had an extra, extraordinary experience. Um, what, what I usually tell my clients is, um, in order to access the, the higher realms, you need to raise your vibration. Um, obviously, there's many ways you can raise your vibration. Um, some of us um, like to meditate, that's what I do. Um, some of us um, you know, like to eat um, good foods or take care of our bodies, uh, maybe listen to high, higher um, vibrational music um, and uh, by doing this um, and maybe being out in nature as well I know a lot of my clients enjoy nature you know they they, they say they sure. feel better um, if we can raise our vibration and just start really listening to the little voice within us you know this little teeny voice that maybe we've drowned out through the monkey mind or through um, you know years of programming that we're not supposed to trust ourselves, you know, that we're supposed to put our trust in something outside of ourselves. In doing that, I think um, they too can have access to those higher realms, to the higher, their higher guidance. And um, Are you live. hopeful for humanity, Deb? I am actually, yes. Um, I'm, I'm not, I, I think that I see it across the, the, I have a lot of clients across the globe right now a lot of people are awakening. A lot of people are realizing that the status quo no longer works. Um, they want to create a better reality. A lot of them are anxious to get on their own mission, so that's why they come to me. Sure. You know, in order to figure out what that is. Well, or, keep helping them. How do people get a hold of you? They can reach me through my website. Um, I'm at uh, www.solaris.com. S-O-L-A-R-I-S. Mm -hmm. Super. And I'm also on YouTube, so they can contact me from there as well. Um, you just uh, type in Debbie Solaris, you'll find me on YouTube. Debbie, thanks for being on Beyond Belief. Thank you for having me. What an amazing story. She was abducted back in 2012, and it changed her life, but maybe it's also changed ours. I'm George Nori, and thanks for watching Beyond Belief.